so far you've seen how I cleaned off the rust from my brake drums and now I'm going to powder coat it and this is the second powder coating gun I bought from China. The first one broke and it um, was delivered from Germany, it looked like this, it was Mr. Pulver. The reason it broke was because I had it hanging here and it was actually corrosive nature in this working hood. So the aluminum parts of my gun just fell apart. Now it looks this like this, this time. This time you have the possibility to uh, uh, modify the voltage. I'm not gonna do anything about that. I'm just gonna run it on the voltage supply that it has, but it uh, has something in the back here. You can see you can run it from 35 kilovolt, 40 kilovolt, 45 and 50 kilovolt. So we're running at 40 kilovolts today. And that's gonna work perfectly fine. This is the ground cable, it goes over here to ground our part. The air supply is very sensitive, picky for these Chinese powder coating guns, so you need to be between 10 and 40 psi. If I find that it's not coming out uniformly from the powder coating gun, then I just need to modify this part here. So I started with this, this is um, a zinc primer, and I filled it up inside there now. So this one needs to be stored dry. So if you put them in the garage, you're gonna soak up a lot of humidity and they won't be able to possible to powder coat with them good anymore. You can actually look in here. Even here we have some chunks, but if I shake it around, they will disappear. I will show you, so you see. But when I move it now, since it's dry, it sort of, flows like water and that's how your paints need to be. We will start coating the first coat now with the zinc primer and then we will do a shiny black. So here you can see now that the electricity is on and it's very simple now I just need to press the pedal when I press the pedal it goes ready ready to coat. The green goes on and you will now be able to see how the powder will flow to our part and that is a little bit too much of air pressure so I'll put the gun to the side and I'll show you so this is a failure you can see some chunks came out there those chunks you don't want them to be on your part when you bake this later on so I will just remove this now Redo it one more time. That's it. And now this piece will go into the oven. Now we just bake this for 10 minutes. It's slightly lower than the recommended temperature for final coat because we're going to coat, or we're going to bond this primer in with the shiny black that we're gonna put on in the end. And yes, you can see how it's melted now, the powder. And I'm gonna let it cool down from this point because I'm not going to uh, let it cure entirely because now we're going to put the shiny black onto this. A different light and uh, you see that the surface finish that you have on your original part from the start is going to determine what this end result comes out like. In some areas up here, we knew that we had some rust pitting. That's basically what you see shining through the primer. If you wanted to have had a perfect finish on this part, then you probably would have needed to um, grind it down perfectly and then primed it and then polished it before you applied the powder coating. Now I'm just gonna put on the shiny black on top of this. Here you can see the ground is connected in there. But what I have here is um, a bearing. So that bearing 
allows me to um, put this metal plate on it. It's an aluminum metal plate. Then I can uh, twist it around, spin it around like this, and uh, evenly coat the entire piece from all angles. Here you have a close-up what it looks like before it actually goes into the oven. And you can see that there are a couple of areas like over here, over there, but I didn't I haven't covered it properly yet. To some extent it will also flow all together when you melt the powder into a uniform coverage. And here you can see now what it looks like before we put it in a second time now 20 minutes at 180 degrees see the texture is not perfect and here is some areas that have a little bit less of coverage but it will be interesting to see how it comes out what it looks like. It's obviously melted, all the powder, but it seems that there, like that's a little area there, you see there, it's a little bump, so, and here we had some incomplete coverage before. You can see those ones that haven't covered completely the gray sink in, in underneath. Here you can see the print through the paint. So it's, it's not that thick that it may appear like. So all this bumpiness very much from the corrosion pitting that we had on the surface from the beginning. Actually what I will do, just for the sake of testing it, I will take it out now, hot as it is, and I will spray a little thin layer of extra powder on here. So here we go, this is what it looks like before I close the doors again. So this is our last time, another 10 minutes at 195 degrees Celsius. At this point we're just gonna let it cool down and then I will show you in normal bright light what this looks like. These dots here are related to my second spray that I did with the powder. Uh, none of the solvent based systems will make you as hard uh, coating as you get with powder coating gun. That pretty much sums it all up. Many thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, just write them down in the comments field.